Well, it may to some of you seem like a strange time that I'd want to read John 3.16 to you, but um, I, I actually think it's very appropriate. Um, wedding and marriage, of course, are a picture. I think a lot of people get married, they don't, even, they don't think about the picture. They don't think about what's being illustrated and the symbolism that God has woven into His design of marriage. Above all, marriage is meant to picture the relationship of Christ and His church. And of course, that church, the bride, is brought to Him by way of the Gospel and by way of believing the Gospel. And I felt that John 3.16 might be extremely appropriate for an occasion like this. And I'd like to read it to you. John 3.16-21 through 21. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Now if there's any question in these verses about what it means to believe, not every faith is saving faith. If there's any question about what type of faith Oh, when before the Lord rescued my soul, I, I had heard of John 3.16. And I, I knew somewhere in the Bible that it said if you believed. But you know, just as Roel said in his testimony, he thought he was a good person. He believed that there was a God. He believed that there was a Christ. But he recognized whatever faith that was, it wasn't sufficient. And so if there's any question from God's Word, what does that faith in John 3.16 look like that leads us to eternal life? Listen to this. Verse 19, And this is the judgment. You see, so often we hear John 3.16, but right there in the context, there's a judgment. What kind of judgment? That means there's a verdict. There's a verdict on this world. The light has come into the world. Well, who is the light? Christ. In chapter 1, Christ is the light that has come into the world. And listen to this. The light has come into the world and people loved the darkness rather than the light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light. It doesn't say that they don't believe that the light exists. It says that they don't like it. They hate the light. You see what the faith is here? The true faith? It's not believing that there is light. It's not believing that there is Christ. It's the fact that these people, because their deeds are evil, they love the darkness rather than the light. Everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light. You see it? There's faith right there. Faith is coming to the light. Faith is when the sinner in his wicked deeds says like Roel did, and like Charlene did. They saw their sin. They saw their sin and they came to the light. That's faith. Back in chapter 1, does it not say this? All who did receive Him, who believed in His name. You see faith right there? Set right next to receiving Him. You receive Him. You come to Him. You welcome Him. You welcome Him as what? You welcome Him as the light who exposes your darkness and who promises to take it away, to save. 
But whoever does what is true comes to the light. And there it is, coming to the light. That is faith. Now let's, let's go back and think. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. You know, my kids can quote that and probably a lot of yours can too. And when I, in my lost days, I've told this before, I used to see John 3.16 in the end zone at football games and I didn't know what it said. I was, I was in that much darkness. But a lot of you did. A lot of you grown up knowing it. And you can just rattle it right off. But have you ever just stopped and thought, looked at the text, and asked yourself, what does that verse deal with? It deals with God. It deals with love. It deals with the world. It deals with the Son of God. It deals with faith, perishing, and eternal life. If I were to ask you, what are the most important things? What are the most monumental things in any of our lives? What are the most urgent things? It certainly has to do somewhere in that verse with some of those things I just read about, and undoubtedly with all of them. Think God. He is first. And you know, so often we just, as this text is rattled off, it's done so in a way that God is little, right? God is little and we're important. And God loves us. And, and you know what? Because we love us, we expect that He loves us. And so we go through there and we look at that verse and, well, that's all about us. And all sorts of people in this world comfort themselves with that text. But we need to stop once in a while and think about this God who so loved that He gave His only Son. Do you realize that this is the same God who wiped out all men but eight? This is the same God that rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah and wiped out all but Lot and his two daughters. This, this is a God who loves, but this is a God who hates. This is a God who thinks. This is a God who judges man based on right and wrong, good and evil. This is a God that we are told is going to judge. This is a God who, that all of us have to do with. This is a, you realize all of us, we're living. I went to a funeral yesterday and the preacher there was saying all the rest of us, you know, the, the one laying in the casket was gone. All the rest of us have to move on. That's where we're at. We're all moving on. We're moving on with life. We have life and breath right now. We're living today and we're moving on if God gives us breath to have it tomorrow. But we're moving towards what? All of us. Towards a day of judgment. This is the God who Scripture describes as exceedingly great. The heaven of heavens can't contain Him. This is the God of Scripture who created heaven and earth. This is the God who we are told sustains all things. Brethren, if He sustains all things, He sustains your beating heart. He sustains the atoms in these walls. That makes Him relevant to everything. This is not a God you can sidestep, tip your hat to, and just think He's small and He just... He's wonderful and no matter what I do and no matter what, how I live, He's just going to smile at me. A lot of people take John 3.16 and that's what they come away with. God's just going to smile at me and love me no matter how I live my life. But listen, it says there, it says there that these people would not come to the light. Why? Because of their evil deeds. And it says of those people that the condemnation of God rests on them already. Did you hear that? Did you catch that? It says in verse 18, whoever does not believe is condemned already. And so this is the God that we're dealing with. And then you have love here. God has designed it into every one of us to want to be loved. And to be loved by God. To be loved by God after we have done the things we've done. The fact that God even has a way to love such unlovely things. What, what we tend to forget all the time is, is that most men look at this and they feel like, well, of course God should love me. But if we really think about the things we've done, we are very unlovable. 
We are unlovely. And then you have the Son of God. The very radiance of the glory of God. This is the Word. The Word who was in the beginning, who was with God, and He was God Himself. This is the Word that took upon Himself flesh. He became man, just like us. Can you imagine the Father saying to the Son, Son, I have enemies. I want you to go die for them. This is the son that he looked at and he says, you're all my delight. I love you, my son. I am well pleased. You are beautiful to me. I love you with all my being. These hateful, detestable, wicked sinners. I want to rescue them. And I want to show them manifestations of love that will confound the whole universe. I want to reveal myself, my son. Will you go die for them? This is what's happening here. And then whoever believes. Did you get that? This isn't for everybody. And remember what believing is. It's coming to him. It's coming to him to be saved, to be salvaged out of the wretched state we're in, to save us from our sin, from its guilt, from the hell of it, and from the power of it, and to wash us. It's whoever believes. So often when people flippantly rattle this off, it's, it's as though that's for everybody because it's He so loves the world. But this is only good for those who believe. And if you don't believe, you know what it says here? It says that they should not perish, but have eternal life. Perish. That's it. You don't come to the light, you perish. You don't come to Christ You die in your sin. And you know what? Whatever this perishing is, it's the opposite of eternal life. We want life. That Oh, God has designed that into the fabric of our being. We want life. We want to live. We're born hating death. We're born fearing death. We want to live. Every fiber of us wants to live. But the problem is most men want to live with their sin and without Christ. And you will perish. No matter how much you cling to life, you will perish if you don't lay down the weapons of your rebellion and bow to Christ and come to Him and receive Him and trust Him and believe Him. And if you come, eternal life. The reason that this verse is so amazing is because one of the most concise Free offers of the Gospel. Eternal life. Christ said that you would have life and you would have it more abundantly. When these two get married today, they are a picture. Did you... Did you brethren, that song, did you really listen to the song Seth was singing? You know, I, I never listened... I've heard that song. No, I guess I just so feel chafed at Caleb. When songs come on there, I just bristle up and I don't hardly listen to them. And so I never really heard the words to that. When he was singing that last night and then today, Christ leaping across the mountains to come for His bride. Here's our brother taking His bride today. This, This is it. Son, Go redeem a bride for yourself. A bride of enemies. And by your power and by your might, you go make them in your image. What a gospel. And that's what's pictured. Amen.